Olympia. Olympia. Okay, as I start off my videos, I start with my kitty Olympia. Olympia of the jungle. Baby girl. Okay. Okay. Don't kill me. All right. Um. <coughs> I actually meant to do this video uh, a little bit earlier in the week and uh, it's just been a very hectic week and this is actually a video that I've been intending to do for a very long time uh, and just now finally getting around to it uh, just meant to be short and fun and hopefully maybe a little interesting maybe not uh, but um, I'm often asked about my appearance in some books uh, and I don't really talk about this very much because it can kind of seem like you're you know bragging or name dropping or something like that uh, which I'm not but um, you know um, I'm, I'm very happy that it's happened and that um, uh, I don't know if I do pride very well but you know it's a kick uh, it's kind of fun and interesting um, I'm in, mentioned in a couple of books in different, well, very different ways, and then I'll allude to something else at the end of the video, uh, but my dear friend Anne Rice, uh, some years ago, dedicated her novel of love and evil to me, uh, and it's, well, it's dedicated to her son, uh, first of course, the, um, author Christopher Rice. And I have, um, I have several copies of this, as you can imagine. When I got this, she sent me the book in manuscript. It was about maybe a year before it was published. Um, a lot of you know that books often take a very long time uh, between the date that they're finished and submitted to the editors and the publishing house. And, and sometimes it can be a year or more uh, before they actually see print um, and uh, of course the first thing that I noticed was you know the dedication to me and I was just really uh, blown away there's no there's not really any way uh, to describe the feeling of that uh, and she had not mentioned it to me uh, and uh, so it was just kind of a well, I wasn't expecting it uh, you know and so it was a very very pleasant surprise a shock really uh, of love and evil and it's a uh, this was the second in uh, Anne's um, Toby O'Dare series uh, uh, which I highly recommend I recommend all of Anne's books uh, and uh, I think you would like this very much it's a short novel I don't know if I would call it a novella maybe a little bit more than that but it is a short uh, well maybe so I mean it's only uh, like a hundred and Mm, it's about 170 pages, so maybe a little more than a novella. Uh, there's no general agreement on exactly uh, how long a novella is. I also have it in the paperback, which I I like this edition very much. Of Love and Evil, The Songs of the Seraphim. And um, we got the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, the uh, dedication and signature. Well, the uh, inscription and the signature here, and um, there's the dedication, Christopher. And if you get it, you know, by all means, make a point of reading Christopher's books as well. Christopher is a fantastic writer. I hope to do a video on his books uh, someday. Uh, so, of love and evil, dedication, stunned, really, you know, very pleasantly surprised, even to this day. You know, I'll just sort of pick it up and look at it, and it's like, really? Uh, you know, <laughs> so uh, there's really no describing that. Also, I, I get asked this quite a bit. I get private messages sometimes on Facebook and other social media where people say, I've heard that you're Garrickin and Anne Rice's Prince Lestat in the realms of Atlantis, and that is not quite uh, correct. Garrickin is Anne's nickname for me uh, and she told me actually for years 
before he first, uh, his chapter appears on page 73 uh, in Realms of Atlantis. And he, uh, people say, is that you? Is that based on you? And I'm like, no, he's not based on me in any uh, in any fashion, in any form, <laughs> you know, trust me, uh, he's actually an alien, uh, and this description on the next page, oh, let me see, did I lose it? Okay, next page, uh, okay, I've lost the passage that I was going to read, oh, here it is. Uh, Gherkin was a tall male, just over six feet in height, that's not me, of a powerful and lean build, that's not really me either, with long black curling hair to his shoulders. <laughs> there was a heavy gold streak in his hair on the right side of the center part, and he had fiercing, engaging, brownish black eyes. None of those things are me. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I've even had people ask me, well, does he have character traits of you? And I'm like, you know, not only in the broadest sense that, you know, uh, we all have similarities, uh, you know, character traits, but it, it's basically my, my nicknames. Uh, you know, I sign my emails to Ann Garrickin. Uh, you know, she will, she addresses me as Garrickin still. And, uh, you know, and it's just... Uh, to know that your, your nickname appears... Uh, in an Anne Rice book is just, again, there's not really any uh, describing that. And Anne has told me before, I guess it's okay to talk about this, that she is planning on someday writing a series of cat books. And I don't think they're children's cat books. I think they're of the variety of um, cat books where people write and uh, maybe they're sort of long stories. I don't really know the exact... Uh, form of them, but I think uh, the cat characters are going to be in New Orleans, uh, her hometown, uh, perhaps in her um, house that she lived in on First Street, 1239 First Street uh, in New Orleans, and um, I asked her one time, when you write these cat books, uh, eventually, uh, would you consider having one of the cat characters named after my uh, my late kitty Angelique? Uh, and uh, because she was very dear to me, I had her. Some of you who've been with me for a long time may remember. I even had Angelique in a lot of my videos, uh, showing off just like I do Olympia now. Uh, she was a flame point Himalayan, a very beautiful cat, very dear to us. Uh, we lost her about seven years ago, still miss her terribly, and Anne said, of course she would, and, you know, so, if she gets around, Anne has a lot of things on her plate, and, you know, if she gets around to writing those books, I'll look forward to seeing uh, Angelica immortalized uh, in uh, Anne Rice's cat books. Another author I want to share with you, I've wanted to talk about for a long time, is another very dear friend, uh, Jordan Rath, who writes under the name J.T. Rath. Uh, he has written uh, two novels. They're uh, Agents and Angels and its sequel, uh, The um, Agents and Angels, The Wolf Paul Initiative. Um, Jordan I met on uh, Facebook, gosh I don't know, five or six years ago maybe. Uh, he's uh, very young. He's an incredibly talented writer, and I'm just so very in awe and jealous that I'm not doing this very well. I can't get the imaging thing sort of messes with me. I've got to cover up my face completely. Okay. Um, he um, written and published these books still in his 20s. <laughs> so uh, that makes me feel like Methuselah or something. You know, I'm still trying to get published. And he's put out two books uh, in his uh, 20s. Uh, as you see, uh, he writes as J.T. Rath. Uh, these books are available on um, Amazon. And I will put the links uh, for his books as well as Anne's. Uh, I'll try to remember to put them down in the, um, the comments below. 
Um, he, I got a new copy of the books. Um, let me see. I think it was last winter, and because um, I had the first book, I didn't have the second one. And uh, I was actually uh, fortunate enough to be a beta reader uh, on the Wolf Paul Initiative, and um, I was very privileged to read that when it was in manuscript. And uh, Jordan is a fantastic writer. He doesn't really need a lot of help. I think there was a handful of, you know, things like maybe typos or a couple of suggestions, but basically it was just, I just kind of felt like, you know, I, I really don't feel needed here. You know, it's just like incredibly uh, good and very well done. And um, he uh, started inscribing in the first book, Agents and Angels. He finished his uh, inscription to me in the second book. And uh, this is his signature down here. J.T. Rath, uh, Jordan, I think that maybe you might have missed, I would say you might have missed your calling if you weren't such a good writer because you should probably be a doctor and write prescriptions, you know, with that handwriting. So, and he also has some nice, where I mentioned in this is in the acknowledgments uh, at the end under gratitude and he had, he mentions all of his, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, this camera looks a little blurry. Uh, and he mentions me uh, down here and uh, has a, I won't read it because it's a very nice and moving uh, passage and, um, you know, Gare weeps easily, you know, <laughs> so I don't want to embarrass myself on camera, but uh, Anne Rice, of course, uh, whom all of you are familiar with, and uh, Jordan J.T. Rath, incredible writer. When I got the first book, Agents and Angels, several years ago, I remember it was lying on the table, my uh, father lives with me and my brother, and I, it was lying on the table behind my couch, I made the mistake of leaving it there, and my father comes and looks and says, what's this, and you know, he sees the guns, and he likes, uh, and by the way, I should talk about the book a little bit, it's a sort of international espionage thriller. Uh, very exciting, uh, fast-paced. Uh, Jordan's strengths are character, and uh, he's he's incredible uh, at action scenes. So the books read very much like a like an exciting movie, uh, you know, which they would make fantastic films. But anyway, my uh, father saw this, and you know, he kind of picked it up and walked with it, and. You know, I didn't see it for a couple of weeks, so it took me a while to get to the, the first book. And then the second one, um, you know, I, I kind of kept that under wraps until, uh, of course, I've read it as a beta uh, reader, you know, so I'd already read the book. But then when I got it, I wanted to read it again to see if it was exactly like the manuscript, which it pretty much was, uh, you know, so. And he loved both the, the books, though. There's a major character who is killed off who he wasn't very happy about that, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, sometimes authors have to do that, and quite often, you know, our readers don't like it. So, uh, that's those two books, and um, there's, I'm not really going to talk about it. There's something else out there. I don't mean to sound mysterious or anything, but I will save that for another day. <laughs> it's just not really anything that I can talk about just now, uh, you know, but we'll we'll leave that for like down the road and uh, that should be interesting and fun. So anyway, books that Gareth mentioned in, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and took it in the spirit that it was meant in uh, and I'm very appreciative to both of these wonderful uh, authors and how do you like my Mikado? People have been asking me about my Mikado. Uh, poster. I do like Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of operetta. I actually saw this in a... Um, I like to frequent antique shops and thrift stores and rummage stores and places like this and this was there and I just liked it a lot. This is from a production that was done at the Stratford Festival in Connecticut 
uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Connecticut, in Canada some years ago, and I just like it, uh, you know, so I enjoyed that. So that's the story of that. So anyway, I hope everyone's doing well and that you had a really great weekend. I've got several other videos planned that I'm hoping to do uh, very soon. I, I want to review Margaret Atwood's uh, Handmaid's Tale sequel, The Testaments, which I'm about to finish up. Um, I'm planning on seeing the movie The Goat Finch, uh, and when I do, I will share my review of that and some other things that I have in mind as well. So, everybody take good care. Thank you for watching. Uh, do check out the links uh, that I'm listing below, and uh, take good care. I'll talk to you soon.